before I start this next video, I just want you to know that it is a lot of complicated stuff in there. Don't try to get into the details of the H lookup and the offset. I just want to share a thought process. One thing is you'll be able to download the workbook if you do want to get down into the details. Let's get started. Got a question from E Cabinets Tips and Tricks. You should check out his YouTube channel. He does a lot of Excel, a lot of VBA coding. So check it out. Here's his question. I was wondering if you could share the most bizarre scenario that you've encountered with Excel and crappy data and how you were able to untangle it. Now I'm going to take you through the wildest thing I've ever had to do. It took me a week to think about it and play with the data until I came up with a solution and then that solution took an hour to implement. Let me describe this for you. 2,000 customers on their own row. And then in the columns, we start with product number one. And after that, 14 columns of data about that product. And then product two, 14 columns relating to number two, 40 products, 600 columns. Then in the customer rows, if a customer had ordered a particular product, then there would be that product and then information. But it was all out of order. Take the first customer. If they had ordered product eight, it might be sitting in the space for product two. But in product two, there was product number 37. My task was to get that all in order. Don't worry if you can't visualize this right away because I'm gonna show this to you. This video is about something that I was gonna do a video about anyway. And that's about building a small model so that you can develop a solution. I was sitting there with 2,000 rows and 600 columns, scrolling all over the place, got a lot of empty space. I'm looking at all of these product IDs and just stuff that doesn't make sense to my mind, but it's creating noise while I'm trying to come up with a solution. It was time to step back, slow down and realize if I can build a small model and get a solution working on that small model, it wouldn't matter how big the original data is. Look here, a small, simple, nonsensical model. Got some customers, an address, and then Instead of these products, I just put some words, pants, book, ostrich, Canada, purple. That's it. I've got 13 customers instead of 2,000, five products instead of 40, and groups of four columns instead of 15. If I can get this solution to work, it'll work on the 2000 by 600. And let's review what's going on. Canada should be in this column, but we can't put Canada here because ostrich is here. Ostrich needs to be moved over here, but book is sitting there. That's gotta be moved here where pants has to be moved here. It gets crazy. So here's how I decided to solve it. I'm going to unhide these rows. I did this in two stages. At stage one, I figured I needed a way for Excel to find this stuff. Can you find ostrich? Can you find Canada for each customer? And tell me where it is. 
Don't just tell me true or false that you found it, but tell me where it is. I used HLOOKUP to do that. So let's look here at book. What HLOOKUP is doing is looking at book and it's going up to this row, row number two, and it's looking for book. It finds book here and then I have it drop down and find that there's this five. So it retrieves that five. Over here for this second customer, Latika, it says ostrich is in the first column. Right, there it is, ostrich, and it pulls that one. Another piece for getting HLOOKUP to work. I have to tell HLOOKUP how many steps to take. So I had to use a lot of relative and absolute cell references so that my range would change and the data pulling in would be right. So that's what this 14 is doing. Let's go over here. Okay, B21 is the 14. Tell an H lookup if you find pants, go down 14 steps. And that's where the one is. Let's go down here and look at it again. Now, see, it's starting with Jenna at this point and it's going 10 steps. And then I wrapped the formula in if in A so that it didn't have a bunch of errors hanging out in this data field. In stage two, this is when I have Excel bring me the data and not just tell me its address. Here I use the offset function to do that. Let's scroll down a bit and see how this is working. I'm gonna zoom out a bit. Now I'm telling offset to always start in cell C2 and go the number of rows that are in B37. Here I'm telling it to go zero rows because that's the first customer. Just stay on that top row. The C21 minus one, that piece is telling offset how many columns to go over. Now we go look at pants for that first customer, and that says it was found in position one, which means we're already on that spot. We don't need to move anywhere. So that's why it's C21 minus one, so that we can get zero. I'm gonna press enter. Scroll up a bit. And we can see in this cell that pants was retrieved because we're still starting at C2. How many rows do we need to move? That's in B38. B38 is one row. That gets us to the second customer. How many columns do we need to move? Nine minus one. So that's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that formula is set. Now we have all of the products. To get those three fields filled in, we just have to go find a product, go over one column to, for field one, another column for field two, another column for field three, and we got it. Now, one trick about Excel, I am going to delete these. Now, I'm going to show you that I can highlight these four cells. And as I drag across, Excel is going to keep that pattern intact. Now this value error is because there is no data for these. So I have to wrap this in some error handling. I'm gonna wrap each of these four formulas in if error equals 
if error and if there is an error comma double quotes here again drag this across and double click to go down let's grab these names paste let's check if Lonnie has ostrich 3102 Lonnie ostrich 3102 we can trust this data we're done Whew, man tell you that was a rough one this is one of those times where when you're dealing with crap data it's not a time to go toe to toe with it it can be too intimidating 600 columns and 2,000 rows it's too much instead you got to stand right on the edge of a big hole and entice crap data to get closer and closer. And you can't be scared. You just got to calmly entice it in. And when you can feel its breath on your face, you quickly move and grab it and push it in that hole. But don't go down the hole with it. And I want you to remember, when you have these big, messy problems, slow down. Make a small model and get your solution working on that model and then scale it out. See you next time.